Good morning, everyone. How are y'all this morning? Doing good? Boy, we see a lot of new faces, a lot of old faces, a lot of familiar faces, you know, so it's good to see everyone in the house today. Miss Ruby, it's the enchiladas. It's, she made enchiladas today, and everybody wanted to come eat lunch, amen? amen. <laughs> y'all may be seated. Um, I kind of lost my train. Sorry. Welcome. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you, Father, for the beautiful weather that we have at the beginning of the week. And we are going to thank you for that lovely weather we're going to have throughout the week. Amen. So, but Father, we ask you to just, Lord, calm our spirits. Bind our minds to the mind of Christ. Let us hear what the Holy Spirit is trying to teach us, Father. Bless the speaker, whoever that may be. May they bring a word from you and not from man. Yes, amen. Father, we ask for the offering. We ask that you bless that, Lord, and that we will use it to your kingdom. Lord, we pray for each person in this seat as each one has a need or maybe even a praise, Lord, and we just thank you. Yes, thank you. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Who's had a good week? Amen. How many people have had God show up? Amen. 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 Yes, we've had some uh, prayer requests answered this week. You know, we, uh, last week I sent out a text about our grandbaby, and there were concerns of uh, some health conditions. She's, uh, Kaylin's about 33 weeks now. But praise the Lord, they went to specialists, and they said that baby is healthy. There is nothing to be concerned about. And so, and the, and the, amen, God's good. And you know, and people yes, are like, amen. well, do you think the doctor saw something? I said, you know what? I'm giving all this glory to God. Yes, we prayed yes. for his healing, and he touched that baby girl, and he's got a special place in the, on this earth for her. Amen. 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 So amen. if you'll stand with us and worship. There's no other name by which man can be saved. awesome that is awesome that is good news mm. you know there's coming a day and it's not too far away Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. His name will be shouted from the mountains. You may not shout it in this church, but there will be a day when its name will be shouted in the streets. There will be a day when every tongue will confess He is Lord. Cancer will have to bow. Depression will have to bow. And that day should be today. We are not waiting on God to fulfill the promises of His Word. God is waiting on us to get in place so He can fulfill His Word. Come on, somebody. Yeah. 
We ask God to do something on one hand and then ask Him to do something else on the other. God's like, make up my mind. He said a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. When you ask Him to do something, stick with it! Boy, it's quiet up in here. You can be seated if you can. I ain't going to make you stand up. But when it comes, His name is power. I'm getting more and more and more where I don't want to go to church anymore, Brother Jim. I don't. Nobody really believes Jesus' name is power. If we did, we would see miracles coming from the house. We would be seeing the things of God being produced from His people. If we believed His name was healing. You know, this is not a popular message anymore. Come... Fill me with what I want to hear. Make me feel good. I'm not, I, don't, I don't care if I make you feel good or not. I want to make sure you're saved and going to heaven. And God does not make people feel good because they don't like their sin exposed. People say, I don't come to your church. You offend me. How? You tell me like it is. Good. Then why ain't you changed? How about that one? Huh? Why hadn't they changed, Brother Delbert? Why hadn't they changed? Why do we keep coming to church day after day, week after week, and still dealing with the same stuff? My Bible tells me that when they laid the sacrifice on the altar, it was burn up. Can Jesus' name deliver you? You don't believe it. You honestly don't believe it. Think about it. If we believe Jesus' name, Brother Milton, would heal, we'd be healed. When we got healed of cancer, we wouldn't be quiet behind everybody. We'd be shouting from the mountains. We'd be shouting in the streets. Brother Chris don't say a whole lot with his mouth, but them sticks speak loud. We ought to be in practice. If Jesus is really who we say He is to us, when you bring somebody to church, will you? We don't have a problem announcing the greatest doctor that we've ever visited. We don't have a problem searching the world over for the greatest physician when we have a heart problem or when we have cancer. But we don't come to the place of the great physician and let him be God. Folks, we heard it a couple of weeks ago. It ain't going to get better. Sin in this world is going to get worse. And we better learn how to speak the name of Jesus. We better learn how to call upon His name. And we better learn how to believe that when we call upon His name, He will answer. Mm. There's coming a day when he, God will no longer strive with man. There will be no more drawing. There will be no more wooing. And God help us when that day comes. I don't want to go... I don't. Uh -uh. When He calls... 
my name, I will hear. The old song used to say, I'll be somewhere listening, not watching TV. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Not when mama calls me to dinner and the bell rings. But I'll be somewhere listening. Listening for my name. What name? My name that is written down in the Lamb's book of life. No more sorrow. No more tears. No more fears. No more tears for fears. Some of you don't know, that's an 80's group. But peace and joy and where the Lamb will be the light. I am going where the Lamb is the light. And in that city where there cometh no night. I have a mansion over there and it's free from toil and care. Baby, I am going where the Lamb is the light. You want to come go with me? Get your life straightened out and get on board. Because this train's leaving and I ain't staying. Kind of like old, old Rich Mullins said, when I leave, I'm going to go out like Elijah. And when I look back on Central Park, it'll be just like a candlelight. Mm. And it ain't going to break my heart to say goodbye. Because I know what's waiting on me on the other side of Jordan. Mm. Mm. But not better than that, I know what I got here. We spend so much time looking for the River Jordan. Of course, we have a very good excuse. Us men are looking for fishing. Just say it. But why don't we look for what God has right now? Today. This minute. He said, I'm the God of right now right now right now right now if you have a need now is the time now is the time you don't need the right song you don't need the right environment you don't need the right anything when it happened to me and I needed him there was nobody there but me and mama and there sure wasn't no music playing it was time. Some of you's times passed and yet you still linger. You still tarry. Folks, there are needs in this house right now that need to be met this instant. Yet you still sit on them. You don't move. And then you want to say, God doesn't do nothing for me. Mm, ouch, come on. Come on. Come on. This is not just going out in here. This is going out through YouTube and stuff too. There are people that we reach that we don't even know we reach. God is not just a hear God. He's a God of every believer. He's the God of every sinner. You didn't think I was going to say that, did you? Or was you not once a sinner? Set free from the chains of darkness? Bought with the blood of Christ? Redeemed and set free Hallelujah. from the curse of sin and death. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. 
Help us, Lord. I heard a guy this week said, How in the world can we as God's people fulfill the Great Commission until we can fulfill the Great Commandment? Mic dropping moment. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. God is real. God is real. Doesn't matter if He's real in my soul or not. God is real. And the world can't explain Him away. Because every time they think they got it figured out, He throws another kink in it. Mm -mm -mm. Glory, 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 glory. There's a dip different atmosphere in this place today. Almost to the point I just really don't know. Mm. Mm. <laughs> How many of you are praying for revival? About seven hands. There comes a point we got to quit praying for it. We got to start preparing for it. God brought judgment to this house over the past few weeks, months. Revival will come to this house. And it may just blow you out of your seat. The lame will dance, the dumb will speak, the deaf will hear. But we got to get real with a real God. Mm. I'm still trying to figure out why people are still in their seat and not in the altars. Because I won't tell you what. <laughs> I'd be running to the altar right about now. God is calling each and one of you today. He has begged and He has pleaded for us to fall on our face before Him. He didn't ask you to stay in your chair. He said, fall on your... Well, you, I can't get up. We'll get you up. But it's time for His people... To humble themselves. Fall on their face before Him. You thought she's going to come up in here today and hear a little message and pat you on your little hiney and send you on home. That's not going to happen anymore. We're the church of God. And we are going to be that church from now on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. I don't think we realize what just happened. That's two in two weeks. We're averaging about one a week. Young man that was in the service last week called me and he said, I got some questions. And I said, I got the Holy Ghost. I got answers. He began to ask questions and I began to bumble and fumble as best as English can 
explain and describe the powers of God over the powers of darkness. And in a 48 minute conversation, a young man came back to Christ. I know heaven gave up a whole lot more praise than that. Matter of fact, they're still partying over a soul coming home. They're partying over a name written down in the Lamb's book of life. <laughs> and all we got was somebody was bless you with a heart, glad you back. Think about it. We get more excited over half price footlongs at Sonic. Oh, now, preacher, that hurt. That was the preacher. That was the, the, the man talking to the preacher in me. What I'm talking to you. That's more excited over a pot of red beans, fried taters, cornbread, onions, and jalapenos. <laughs> At somebody else's house on their 28th birthday. Did my dyslexia kick in? Did it? Somebody else has got a birthday today. Uh huh. Mm hmm. I think it's Miss Ann. Rumor has it Miss Ann turned another year younger. Well, I'm glad, Miss Ann, you decided to celebrate it here with us in the house of God this morning. Now somebody else has another birthday, I think. She just got re-entered in. You want to say what happened this morning, sweetheart? Can you say what happened? You just know it happened. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, singers and musicians. Good job this morning so far. It may not be over. Well, how many of us have been taught the Holy Spirit all of our life? How many of us have reacted to the Holy Spirit all of our life? No, put your hands down. You ain't reacted to the Holy Spirit all your life. There was a times that we were out acting like Leon, and, and, and I mean, uh, uh, Brother Delbert, uh, he got in the way. He got between me and my subject. <laughs> there was a time in our lives we all got out there and acted like a bunch of heathens, because we were. There were times that Christ even came into our life and we still sat up in church and acted like a bunch of heathens. Where's, where's Brother J.D.? I need, I, need, I need my old me, oh my man. Mm. Now, I'm going to ask you a double-edged question. And you can, you can answer both ways, actually. And the question is, do you have the power? The answer is no, but yes. I told you it was a two-edged. And some of you are still in the no. How 
many of you in here are truly saved? And careful how you answer that because lying in church is really something you don't want to do. If you're living out Galatians chapter 5, don't you dare raise your hand. Because if you're murdering, lying, smoking, now we're not talking about cigarettes, we're talking about There you go. Not the good stuff. Made my eyes cross. Shacking up, drinking up, you're not saved. The Bible says light and dark cannot dwell in the same house. You pour oil in water and what does it do? It separates. But when God comes in, the light has come in. And it will expose your sin. That's where most Christians stop. I have sin. It's exposed. The Spirit of God has revealed. But we have no power over it. See, we as people have no power over the sin nature. And there's a difference in walking in the flesh and walking in your sin nature. There's a difference between sin nature and flesh. You said you already said that. You didn't hear me the first time. When we get saved, we are released from the sin nature. Now the flesh wants what it wants. And it loves those feelings. See, God is not a feeling. God is a lifestyle. Everyone has pretty much been taught when you get saved, the Spirit of God comes in. And to a point, that's true. But that's still not the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So we have church people who are Babes, they're stuck between the salvation and the power. Honey, bring me that extension cord you had yesterday. Or no, I had it, didn't I? You was at the house. There's a, an extension cord just to the left of that door. Remember, if you would, please. This extension cord has two ends to it. And in this world, we call it a female and we call it a male. As Tanya and I were listening to sex therapists, some of you need it. Because there is a therapy of sex in God that's deeper than what you realize. The only sex you know is lust. But God has something much deeper. And when I said sex therapy, your mind went to flesh, not spirit. You went to the, the pleasure of the body, not the experience of the pleasure. It's a difference. 
we try to get A put into B. And it works. Look at there, Leon. I mean, it just goes right in, doesn't it? I'm tell well, it wasn't really easy, but <laughs> am I plugged in? Yes, I am. I'm plugged in. What's it plugged into? What do we as Christians get plugged into? And we want to call self Christians. Jesus said, People will know that you are my disciple by. And the keeping of my commandments. When we sin against self, that's sex. You're not sinning just against every something else. You're sinning against God and yourself. Now, we're not talking about reproductive type. We're talking about... <laughs> and my wife is going, my wife is going to shoot me. But I don't care. I've been shot before. I'm talking about our spiritual ignorance going to seed and producing little stupids. We think we know the word and we start spitting it out everywhere, planting it. Isn't that what sex is? Is offspring in something? That's what it's supposed to be. Oh, but the world has made it dirty and nasty and filthy, vulgar. The world takes everything that God means for something good and turns it around. When we get unplugged from self, we still have two ends. I can stick my finger in here all day long. You got a fork. I'll explain that here in a little bit. That'll work. That'll work. Better yet, here, you hold it. You stick it in there. Let me hold the other end, too. Well, it's, it's, it's right there. Stick it in there. Stick it in there. What's happening? Why? What's not plugged in? How many of us are walking around with the other end dangling at our feet? Oh, but yet we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Living right. When was the last time you broke the law? You got to admire honesty. Every Monday morning, I'm running the speed limit 75, and I got that baby crew set right on 79 and three quarters. Because at 81 and a half, they're going to ticket you. You get five miles, and I'm going to push the limits. How many of us push the limits in our personal lives? But when we come to church, we sit back and don't push nothing. See, we have two ends to our extension cord and one end of it belongs to us. We have the female end. We are the bride of Christ. The other end, once we get saved, belongs to Him to be plugged in. Now I'm going to undo my Delbert here. 
you know, nice little coil, ever hair in the right place, ever. <laughs> you go, Delbert. Your little cherry curl and, and, oh, we don't have those anymore, do we? Your little Jerry Jones, Jimmy Johnson, perfect. Now we've just come unraveled. Now what happens? We're a mess. No, we're not a mess. Now we can reach things we used to couldn't reach. But guess what? We're reaching stuff. With distance between us, but we still stick your finger in it. Well, she was quick, wasn't she? She was like, okay. I trust my pastor. The Bible would say, thou fool. Don't trust it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Let me go over here. You're going to have to move. Now stick your finger in it. Why? Because why? Robert, come stick your knife in it. Come stick your knife in it. What's wrong? What's wrong? Okay. Stick your finger in it. Go ahead. Go ahead. I got it in my hand. I wish I had one of them little pocket generators. I just play. Actually, 110 don't do much. 440 will burn your hand. That's my left hand. I mean, who's afraid to put a sticky tongue in it? But plug it in. We don't want to get close to that end, Brother Jim. Uh-uh, get that end away from us. See, when we come to church and we get plugged in and the power of God begins to flow, people run from the other end. Boy, I got strength in that leg real quick. I was like, wow, how did I get so strong there? But we need to get this in plugged in. This is the Holy Spirit in our lives. When we get plugged in, the Holy Spirit begins to flow through us. The Bible says we shall receive, Acts chapter 1 verse 4, shall receive And ye shall receive. Who's got the power? Who's got the power? I asked you the question a while ago. Did you have the power? Do you have the power? Jesus said in John that I must go. It is expedient that I go. Does anybody know what that word expedient means? That means I got to get up out of here. That's basically what he was saying. I got to get up and get gone. Otherwise, you will not have any power. See, the apostles had the power when they walked with Christ. Christ was with them. But once he died and rose again and had to ascend to, if you will, use my terminology here, just flatter me a moment, into the courtroom for the court that's going on over us and our sins, he left us powerless. And I like the way I read the commentary. It was not, and I owe y'all an apology. I got excited last week and used the wrong word. I said, change, it's charge. The word there, commanded them to wait, means he charged them as a military charge. To wait. Wait. You didn't put nothing in the oven, did you? Because I'm not dismissing until 5 o'clock this afternoon.
Nobody wants to wait. Nobody wants to wait. Matter of fact, Jesus said, don't do ministry, don't go visiting, don't do any praying in the healing side. He said, don't do anything till you receive. My humor, okay, it blame my daddy. It come from him. The head honcho sends them to church with no clock, no food, and tells them to wait, and then he leaves. That's what he did. He said, I'm leaving, but you go wait. Well, aren't you going to wait with us? Mm -mm. I got to go so that he can come. Folks, Jesus has already went. Now, some of you need to come. The things that you struggle with in your life. Acts chapter 1. Hint, hint. Says that we shall receive. How many of you came to receive? This morning. I agree. Double portion, baby. Double portion. But what did you come to receive? The goosey bumps from Sister Gloria's playing and singing in the worship team? Me ministering the word. You're not going to get goosey bumps from me. You're going to get sore toes and fat lips. I know I do every week when I'm studying. Sometimes the word of God's rough. And we got to quit looking at it for others and start looking at it for self. Because folks, I'm going to tell you something. There's some selves up in here that's pretty squirreled up. It's not for you to know the times and the seasons which the Father put in His own power. But. 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 Well, I've already got the Spirit of God in me. Yeah, it sounds like it, doesn't it? Well, I witness to everybody in Walmart. Yeah, and you pay your tithes there too. That hit below the belt, didn't it, Sister Gracie? Well, I want that new phone. Well, I'll just take it from my tithes money. We do. We do. Because we want a new car. We go and buy something out of our means and then pray that God will take care of it. He'll take care of it and put it in somebody else's garage because you can't afford it. It may not be... Folks, let me tell you something. The car that you need may not be what you think you want. The spouse that you dream of may not be the spouse you need. Because the spouse that you're trying to pick might take you out of church. And your helpmate should be helping you into church. Helping you save your money, honey. Instead of the wife going, give me the money, daddy. 
Do I look like your pimp? <laughs> you work together. When Tanya come along, I was turning a life around of having a spouse that vocalized loving God. Vocalized wanting to serve God. <laughs> Dougie, it works real good until we have to get up and do something. See, we want God to use us until we don't feel good. Then we want Him to leave us alone. Let me stay in my chair. But, Brother Milton, we get up and go to work. I don't understand. Well, I can't pay my bills if I don't go to work. What happens if you, you can't go to heaven if you don't go to church? That's not true. But a person who loves his or her spouse will move heaven and earth. I got reminded of this about a week ago. My wife said, you got one week to clean up for Valentine's Day. And I knew what she meant. I'll spend hundreds of dollars on the boat, fishing gear, on the... <laughs> Why is your face so red? Mr. I missed Valentine's Day too. Did you? Oop, no comment. Uh, edit that out. I'll spend hundreds of dollars going a weekend, staying in a motel to go see my brother when he's got COVID. And then he says, oh, by the way, I got fever. No, I ain't coming in there to see you. So I get in my little car and I turn around and boogie my rear right back home before I get squirreled up. So what did I do? I squirreled up Valentine's Day. Well, I must be old because I didn't worry and didn't think. I heard it on the phone. What are you doing? Uh, I stopped by the church to get whatever it was I was get had to pick up and forgot to get it because she got me so nervous that I, my mind went completely off of what I was supposed to have been doing to what I should have been doing. You got any salt? So she says, I looked up your location. You was at church. You should have been home by now. I said, I hate fruit. Apples are not my friends. So we went on through dinner. We did what we had to do. She went to get in the shower. I went out to the truck, got the dozen roses, carried them in, set them down beside the bed. She gets out of the shower, doing all of her things, and she reaches, bends down to pick up Caesar and goes, now you bring flowers. I ain't seen her since 6 o'clock that morning. What does she want from me? A dozen roses. So I stopped at Brookshire's on the way home. Now I told her where I got them. Because I looked at Walmart and they looked worse than most church folks do after a good, strong revival. They were all wilted, beat up, and brown and discolored. So I swung through, I almost said Brahms. <laughs> they don't have roses. Brookshire's does. And I got home after I was going to pull one and lay it on her pillow. I'm glad I didn't. I thought, well, no, that would have got her pillow wet. She'd be mad over I got the pillow wet. She's already mad because she didn't think I got her anything. And I got her chocolate. That's better than... I didn't buy the box chocolate 
and the heart shape and all that. She's already got my heart. She don't need a box of it. Okay? Where are you going, preacher? Just hold on here. We're going to get there. I promise. I got to 5 o'clock, so we'll get there. She looks at them. She smells them. She says, oh, they're nice. And she sets them over on the dresser. And I'm thinking, that's my grandmother's dresser. I hope that thing don't drink lip water. I don't want no water ring on my dr mm. So I get to look, and she's got it sitting on paper. We're good. We're good. I thought, man, Brother Johnny, I've done it. I got her a dozen roses. I got her uh, those big Hershey chocolate bars with almonds that she likes them. She hadn't even eaten them. You trying to make me fat? Oh, I blew it! I blew it! We're getting ready to settle down for bed, and I look over and I go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two. I got 11. I couldn't even get a full dozen. <laughs> Must be hitting home. <laughs> Mister, here, Paula, you like this card? Yeah, I love it. Put it back now that you read it. Save money that way. The point, as Delbert would say, my point is, even as men in our best efforts, we still come up short. What did she say? See, they know. They know. But when we get plugged into the source, Jesus said, I am not here, so I will send you a comforter. I believe it's in John uh, 7, I believe. But he said, I will send the comforter. I love these things when they work. That you may be, that you may receive power after he comes upon you. After he does what? After he comes where not in you but he comes see there's a difference in him in you and upon you you can go to the pond but you can't get on it unless Jesus says Peter come on out I've never seen a man walking on a pond I'm not going to say I didn't see him walking on water with trick photography and things that we can do today. But the pond can get on you. When you go to walk out, oh, this is good. When you go to walk out on a substance, all of a sudden, you are completely under. You are completely overtaken by the water. See, when we get plugged into the Holy Spirit, we become overtaken. Not us in Him, or Him in us, that comes through salvation, but through the overtaking on us after he comes upon you you shall receive this has been misunderstood for years and I've been the main one who's misunderstood it because I thought that you didn't even get the spirit until you were baptized in it because Peter went to him and said have you heard of the Holy Spirit have you been baptized in the Spirit? And they said, we've never even heard of such. But it only came to them through the what? The laying on of some hands. 
We got to do something. That means somebody had to have it to give it. Somebody had to have power to transfer. The church is trying to operate the field of witnessing without the power. CC Music Factory said it in the 80s. I got the power. And all in the world they were talking about was dancing. But folks, let me tell you something. I got some power that you need that I got that I will transfer if you want it. But you don't get it if you don't want it. And if we would line up with what the Word of God says, it says you will not be in any position, start a church or anything else until the power comes upon you. Well, I don't read that anywhere. Okay, I'll tell you what. You read your Word and bring it to me, and then we'll compare them. Because what He said here in chapter 4 I mean, in chapter 1, in verse 2, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments, more than one, unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Well, we don't have apostles anymore, so we don't have the need for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I hear, I hear one of my... Buddies that worked at Garland, he said, Fool, who do you think you are? You are an apostle of Jesus Christ. If you are saved, filled with the Holy Ghost and following the commandments that he left. What does the word apostle mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. Oh, I turned it off. All right, let's see if I can do this real quick. How you turn it on? <laughs> now turn it over. And drop it. I'm glad it ain't mine. What does that say? Well, I don't think I can blow it up. I might can. Nope, this one won't let me blow it up. A delegate, messenger, one sent from with orders. That's what number one up there says. Now, if there was only 12 apostles, then tell me why, wrong screen, why we have Barnabas' name and Timothy and Savannah's. If there's only 12 apostles, why do we have three more names? Why in 1 Timothy did Timothy say, I am a pastor, an apostle? If they were stopped with the 12, does Timothy not come after? Boy, I'm blowing holes in all kinds of theories this morning, ain't I? Theolo thea, 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 whatever your stinking thinking is. Theology, that's the word I was looking for. Are you not a delegate of God? Are we not the representation of God's people? You say, well, how do you know that that's that word? What does it say right there? You can't see it. But the first top yellow says apostles, Greek, 652. What is the Greek? That's the Strong's number to give you the original definition of the original word in a, in a translated language. What, it, what? That's what it meant way back then. Understand that part? In Greek... When they spoke Greek in the New Testament, when all the apostles spoke Greek, this is what it meant. 
a messenger. Are we not the messengers of God? So why are we sitting in the house of God at His table while the fields are empty? Because we ain't got plugged in. Our churches are off balance because we don't teach the receiving of the Holy Spirit anymore in our churches. Well, now, if you want it, Brother Jim, just come on down. You might get it. Ain't no might to it. If you're looking for it hard enough, I didn't care who put their hands on me. I just said, God, I want all you got. And if it's real, give it to me. If it's not, shut it down. So guess what happened? He shut me down on the floor. One, two, and there's three right here that will probably... I don't know if Johnny, you know, that memory is, he might remember. I don't know. No, I'm teasing him. When the, God put me on the floor, and I like to took out my little mother, that when God, I'm glad I was about half my size then as I am now, my body began to change colors. Did it, Dad? They checked my pulse. They began to look, went down a dead man. Got up a living man. Because I didn't care who touched. Because that's just a point of contact for the Holy Spirit to move. Because I had read in the Word of God that when they laid their hands on them, they received from them the power of the Holy Ghost. My life changed dramatically. I went from sitting in the back pew going, come on, Johnny, you know we're going to eat. Man, we got hot dogs coming on. Wind this thing down. What you waiting on? I went from that to standing up going, glory! I know what he's talking about. I know what he's feeling. I know what's going on in him. I know why he's explaining things that now I'm not hearing. I'm experiencing When people begin to speak the Bible, there's something that begins to have a feeling to it that comes to life because it is the living Word of God and the Holy Spirit will bear witness with it and it will come to life inside. Now, if you're battling sin, you might ought to check where your status is. Look at you, baby. Look at you. One sent on a mission. Yeah, our mission is one service a week. Well, I just can't last beyond one. I know a God who heals. Well, God understands. I know a God who delivers. I know a God who will feel. Now, there are some folks that you know, I understand the physical need, but I know a God who heals. Physical. The church needs today is a great big spiritual. Yes, we'll go with that. I said one time what they need is a great big BM. It's time to flush out some of this old stuff that we've let the world and the devil bring into our sanctuary. And we need to start pushing all of that out and start being filled with the real stuff of God. When God begins to come into your life and the Holy Spirit is given permission and, 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 and free roam, He will push all that stuff out. But he can't push out what you're chaining down. Folks, we have got to get to the place to where 
we take the commandments of God literally. To order, command to be done, to enjoin. God has called us to enjoin with Him. And sitting around going, well, I'm saved and that's it, that's that. Have a good life. Because you're going to play hell till you get the power. You did. But Jesus said, and upon this rock, he ain't talking about the man Peter. He's talking about the revelation that Peter got. For Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father in heaven See, that's what the Holy Spirit does. When He comes in, He begins to unravel and reveal the mysteries that God has already ordained and placed for us. Yeah. That's good preaching, Brother Milton. That's, that's good stuff. Or Brother JJ, depending on who's calling your name. I don't really care as long as they're calling me for dinner. Amen. Amen. Folks, we got to get plugged in. We got to get plugged in. And arguing over toilet paper rolls and colors and carpets and all, don't fit. Has no place. What we need to be fussing and fighting over is I'm going after them. No, get out of my way. I'm praying for them. No, I am. Let's just team up and go get them. Just team up and go get them. You have the power through God. Mm. whom he had chosen John chapter 15 16 says for we have not chosen us but he has chosen we are a chosen it says that we are a chosen generation a holy nation a royal priesthood hey folks we are somebody quit acting like you are a nobody we are partakers of the kingdom of God and being assembled together that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Why was it Jerusalem? That's where the temple was. It was the temple. And, and folks, don't get me wrong. I know if they started with over 500 and only 120 was left, I know some of you ain't going to stay. You ain't going to hurt my feelings. The army's not for everybody. The navy's not for everybody. The air force is not for everybody. The marines are not for everybody. That's why we have so many different ones. They all have a job to do. And that is to protect your freedom and rights. And you can't pray for them. See, the Holy Spirit was sent when He baptizes in us, not only gives us power, but He fights for our rights. Oh, some of you didn't catch that. What do you mean you fights for my right? Fights for your right to be healed. Fights for your right to be whole. Fights for your right to live a godly life. Fights for your right to be mature in the things of God. Now, can I wrap it up and put it pretty simple? I am going to. The Holy Spirit comes and helps you fight for your right to be pure. Everybody wants to talk about how the church... We're not a perfect people. No, but God expects you to be pure. Amen. And if we would speak more or less of each other and more on the pure Word of God... Oh, it's only 12.15. I still got four hours and 35 minutes. Glory. You collect after service. I ain't going to be able to afford him by then. We spend so much time running to the things of the world. Doctors, psychiatrists, 
rehab centers. You know, Joseph Larson said something this week, this morning, matter of fact, we were listening to it. He said, what we have is a bunch of ungrateful Christians. The previous administration that America had in its time, well, in one of the worst times that has happened in my life, the president and his administration tried to keep the church doors open when everybody else was saying, shut the doors, shut the doors, shut the doors. We kept ours open, and you realize through the whole pandemic, not one person got sick that was in this church. But it happened later when we got relaxed. When we quit applying the blood to the post. Every morning that we get up, we need to apply the blood to the post. Well, how do I do that? By taking up your cross and crucifying your flesh daily. We want God to do what God does and I sit back and reap. But folks, I'm going to tell you something. As being a boss now for several years, several different times in several different companies, if, if one of my followers comes to work and does nothing and just expects me to do it all for them, maybe I don't need them. If I've got to do your job for you, I don't need you. See, here's what God does. God says, if you won't, I'll find somebody who will. Isaiah chapter 6, when he said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and His train of His robe filled the temple. Yeah. If He walks in this temple, we'll go, Hey, what's up, Jesus? What's happening? Yeah. Because we don't have a relationship with Him. When we have a relationship, we will bow down before Him and say, Oh, King, I am unworthy of Your presence. We are a people in an unclean land. And it's time some people stood up and said, Angel, take the coal. Not even the angel could touch the coal. He took the tongs and grabbed it and touched the lips of the man and he said, Lord, here am I, send me. And then on Monday morning, oh, woe poor is me. I don't want to. God, take me home so I don't have to go to work. He goes, yeah, right. You got responsibilities to fulfill. Amen. We're always looking for the easy way out. Do we want God to heal us or do we want Him? I didn't even get into where I really wanted to go. All right, two announcements I need to make. And then I'll wind this thing down and maybe let you go home. Yeah, it's five o'clock already, somewhere. March 19th, starting at nine o'clock, we're having... Revelations, question and answering. And I'm still not totally 
I got an idea of the, of the panel that I'm going to use. Don't come to me and ask me to be on, on the panel. Don't. Because that will get you off real quick. Because it's not about, Delbert said it this morning, it's not about us. It's about the right ones in the right place at the right time. It's not a time of arguing. It's not a time of debate. It is a time of looking at what the Scripture says and what the Scripture only says. I don't need man's opinions. That's the problem with the church today. There's too many men's opinions in the pulpit. Yes. Secondly, I don't remember what the second one was. I need to go to the kitchen. It'll hit every time. Or go to the recliner. What was the second one, honey? I got it. We will be starting up a Sunday evening service. And it will be a time of teaching and questioning and answering. And I don't care if you don't show up or not. If you don't, that's on you. But when it comes time for filling positions and stuff, I'll remember that. Preacher, you're hard. I'm just telling you the truth. I heard a preacher one time say, I think his name was Johnny McLean, but I can't remember, said when he looks for deacons and trustees that he sees the ones that are picking up the paper off the floor without having to be asked. Come on, somebody. This is good word. And we're going to start studying the Holy Spirit in depth. And we're going to start studying Ephesians and Romans. And we're going to start digging in because we're going to start in the book of Acts because it's time God's people learn how to act once again. I know how to act. Yeah, I've seen you. Mm -hmm. Screaming and hollering and acting a fool in the church parking lot. Glory. Yep. Now, if I really want to hit home, run over that idiot that just pulled out in front of you. Yeah, that's me. If Sheila don't get him first. It's called accountability. And that's why the church back then saw the things that they saw because they were held accountable to each other mostly. I don't know what's your little something. Tell me and I'll tell you if it is or not. that next week but see Tanya is kind of like you she puts the bread in the toaster plugs it in but never pushes it down or no I said it backwards she pushes it down but didn't plug it in and then wondered why it wouldn't pop wasn't he doesn't expect us to be but he expects us to occupy and to be about the father's business he expects us to be about and it's hard to be about the father's business if you don't have the tool that reveals it 
souls. The day of Pentecost came in Acts chapter 2. And it filled them. They had cloven tongues of fire over their head. It wasn't for the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues that was the witness. When the Holy Spirit manifested, there was 3,000 added to the church. It's not in the gift. It's in the manifestation of the third person. I realize some of this is over y'all's heads. But that's because you go home and play word search or scudo or beto or whatever else. Watch YouTube games and, and TV. You don't get in your words so you don't understand what the preacher's saying sometimes. This may be the only words you get till next Sunday morning. And yes, I'm going to fill it as best I can. Build your relationship. Build your relationship. God will not give you anything that is harmful, but only that which will prepare you for the fight. Mm. Wow, I hadn't heard that song in forever. As we stand on your word. Mm. And I probably will not quit preaching the Holy Spirit till every last one of us is filled with the Holy Ghost. And some of you got refilled. Because folks, let me tell you something. Thursday night's week ago, you missed. You missed. You missed. <laughs> you missed. Now... I would be a fool if I didn't let you come and experience what I've spoke about this morning. Folks, you've got to remember, we've got people watching all around the world now. Not that they are, but they could because YouTube never disappears. All they've got to do is go to Artist Hodge Church, look it up, Share it with whoever you want to. It's there. And it'll be there long after. A hundred years when I'm gone. Of course this world won't be here. Because Jesus is coming. But it's there. And the truth has to be told. 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 How can you tell the truth if you don't know it? I invite you to come. If you have a need, now's the time. Not tomorrow, not next week. The Word of God says, for today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is promised to no man. And if you died right now, where would you be? Where would you be? Well, I like the way I'm living. If you died today, where would you go? Well, I believe I would go to heaven. Mm -mm, that don't cut it. See, there's a little thing that Holy Spirit draws. Where would you go today? Where would you go? Bless his heart when he wakes up, he just burts out whatever's on his mind. If you died, where are you going? Well, I've tried to live for this Christian thing, and I've tried and I've tried, and I just can't do it. But I sure do enjoy my beer. I sure do enjoy all the comforts that I have of this world. But yet for a moment they are but a vapor here today and gone tomorrow. 
The book of Revelation says the only things that will last is what's done for Christ. And let me tell you something. Please don't wait like I did. When my kingdom fell, my kingdom fell. Several times. So I'm just done. I'm through building mine. I'll build his. You need healing. You need deliverance. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Today's the day. Today is the day. I'm not going to wait on you. I'm not going to wait. Because when it's your time to die, you can't go, oh, wait, 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 wait. I got to, mm-mm, nope. I got to get it right. Too late. You should have done it while the preacher said. And that's what's going to happen. That's exactly what's going to happen. Tanya and I, Tanya Moore, had a friend. He left for work one day on his motorcycle. He didn't go home that day. One of the boys, the, guy, the kid that grew up with him, with them, he was working on a building here in Greenville. He was doing things he shouldn't have. He knew, he knew of God, but he got up on top of the building doing drugs, fell off, fell on the inside of the scaffolding and hit his head on everything all the way down. He was dead before he got to the ground. I heard him say, one day, it's too late now. It's too late now. And I've heard of people falling the same height and surviving because of God. Folks, I could turn around here See, there in mid-sentence, I could drop dead, but I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. Oh, I got my ticket, brother, and waiting on it to be punched. But until he takes me, I will not sit down and fold my fingers. I will keep working and begging for the kingdom. Mm. My, my, my. Wow. Father, bless the food and thank you for it and the means to have it. Amen. You're dismissed.